for your participation. We are going to start the uh, English medium discussion. Uh, we have the appointed sutta, sutta or the topic for the day. Uh, but before we go into the traditional start, if anyone is having any question or topic or any interview reports, uh, we can take a few minutes at the beginning. Answer Bante, uh, we have received two reports instead. Yes, please. First report, there was Sarna Swami in Vahansa. I sat, I sat cross-legged and began to bring my focus to my body. I could hear the cars going back and forth in the outside. It was night, so no other noises were there. Just the occasional vehicles going by. I was able to slowly focus my attention towards my body. I started to be a passive observer and watched how my body breathe, breathes. I managed to continue his focus and uh, for about 15 minutes. Then my focus was disturbed by a phone notification. I felt my attention go to, the, go to that immediately. So I was able to identify what happened and bring it back to my body. I continued this for five more minutes and stopped. I noticed that it's difficult to differentiate between breathing on purpose and naturally breathing because sometimes I think like, okay, I'm going to breathe in now and then take a breath. I'm not sure if it should be like that because I think I should just let the body do whatever it wants and I should just observe it. Venerable Tero, please advise on how to proceed with my meditation. Much merits to you and the Satipasal Committee. May you achieve Nirvana. End of report, Bhante. Okay, that uh, latter part of the report where whatever we are going to do, it becomes artificial. When the things are happening, it's quite natural. So human beings are always in a role play. They are just like in the stage. And uh, even if you go to a forest, uh, if even if you go to a cave and try to meditate, this forced breathing can happen. When you are walking, you f feel like in act. But how many hours it takes for someone to uh, experience natural breathing? That is what we call familiarization. So familiarization takes years. It's so dangerous, you can't do it in your deathbed. You can't do it in your old age. You can't do it when once you become sick. So when you are very young and we are able-bodied, then well, you can see, just sit and wait and try to see the breath. You see force breathing. And you have to do it again and again and again till... It becomes effortless. That the effortlessness is the first sign of losing your ego. Whatever you do, you are fostering, you are fertilizing, you are new, uh, giving nutrients to the ego. Total education system is fostering ego. Today's skills in the world is fostering ego. They think they are doing out of compassion. No. This is a capitalist system. They think educated people are the people, skillful people are the people. We have the education, knowledge, we have the skill, please come. Give us the tuition fee and pay salute, we will give you. And they will give a certificate. So this is the joke. In our old age, about 200 years ago, there were no such education institutes are there. Those people who wish go there, they have to work. They have to find the firewood. They have to find the water to the master. Help. And then the master will give. Some will understand and they will become the ruling party. But today, everything is commercialized. So that means the present day compassion is the tool for capitalism. And parents think they are very compassionate to children and they are teaching. Whenever you are teaching, it is artificial. Whenever you are learning, it is not artificial. Learning is a job of a humble man. 
So, Madam Montessori and others, they are teaching present day 21st century learning skills. They are not teaching skills. So, that's the way revolution is happening. So, Buddha came to know it much, much before. He says, don't get camouflaged by these compassionate bulldogs. They are in the, they are using the compassion as the tool of capitalism. You have done your past merits. You better associate good friends, be in a good place and uh, believe upon your own experience. They appear like outdated now. They appear like outdated now. So therefore, whenever you do something, it is become artificial. So what you have to do is do it again and again. Don't fertilize, don't uh, give nutrients. Ultimately, it becomes natural. So that is the time you are going to start meditation. So I would say, <coughs> uh, for example, for that particular report, the, that particular person may go wandering mind, daydreaming, fantasizing. And while you are in fantasizing, when you are in a daydreaming, sending kites, all of a sudden you will remember, I am not mindful on my body, I am not mindful on my breath, or maybe walking body, and then there is a tendency to mind to come back to the breath. That breath is natural. That is not artificial. That is a arahant, enlightened being. Because you are recovering to the your breath, you are recovering to your <coughs> walking, and that walking and breath is indicate who am I. Otherwise, you are breathing person is with artificial myself, artificial egotistic way. So, but there is no other way. It's only trial and error way. So, you have to keep on happening it till it become effortless. So, effortlessness is the beginning of the not doing something or the beginning of losing of egoism. So therefore, effortless is doing nothing. So ultimately, amount to meditation means doing nothing. As far as you are doing, ego is there, self is there. Artificial breathing can happen. Artificial walking can happen. Anything appear like artificial. But senior members, senior meditators understand it. They are compassionate. This is never mind. At the beginning it is like that. By doing again and again it will become uh, effortless we call autopiloting mode. Autopilot mode is not the lethargic one. It is not a blazy bones theory. It is happening because otherwise unwantedly ego come and fork fingers. Become egotistic. So this, this understanding is the only thing you can do but you are on the way on the correct way, <clears throat> do it in such a way, let it happen in a, a, a effortless method. Uh, anayasa, in singular we call, ayasa means effortful, anayasa, it's beautiful, it's very aesthetic. You can see the children before six, a, six years old, everything is happening. So mother take the responsibility because the child do not know. But after six, you ask your independence. You fight for independence. You go to hell. Go to hell. Soon after six years old, you are a devil. You are a culprit. Before six, we had a very beautiful age. We had no any idea about the nakedness. We have no idea about the urine. We have no idea about the de defecation. We have no idea about the eating. Everything is happening. Perfect. Then on word, you are torturing yourself. Okay, Kumara, we are going to the next. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Bhante. Second uh, report. Uh, today I did walk in meditation for half an hour. As I walked, observed the sensation inside of my feet. I tried to see each step independently. There was small variation between each step. An apparent one was the amount of pressure that I used. Sometimes I would 
push down hard and other times less hard. This also affected my walking speed. Another thing that I noticed was that there were many parts of my legs and feet which were never used. After some time, I started to notice when my left foot was not touching the ground as well as when it was. After this, I did sit in meditation for half an hour. Today, I noticed that my breath was quite slowly and steady. This may have been because I was quite tired. I also noticed that sometimes my breathing was quite heavy. I felt as though my breath was quite similar to my, me walking in that uh, every in that every in breath and out breath felt similar to taking a step it also had points where there were there was no breathing thank you venerable bante uh, that's the end of report bante so if i am to continue my comments whenever the breathing become effortless uh, it is it's a it's an early sign of no breathing. Effortless breathing, no ego, appear like no breathing. It's so subtle. And the other thing is, necessity of oxygen also goes down because your mind, physical work stopped, meant uh, verbal work stopped, if at all, only the, the mental part. And it needs only very little oxygen. And this little oxygen going effortlessly, it won't mark in-breath, out-breath dis discrimination. That means losing the characters, losing the sign, losing the demarcation, losing the intrinsic character. That means it is our mind read it as if no breath. This is very, very prominent in the fourth jhana. Fourth jhana is no breath. But that means he is not dead. He can't detect it. If the desire is there, if it is low to the point it is not detectable, it is no more becoming the desire. You have a hatred, it's so low, it is not demarcated as hatred, that won't call the hatred. That means neutral. So that is the way we learn everything depends upon your demarcation, everything depends upon your, your nomination, everything depends upon your labeling. So ultimately, label become faded off. Uh, early sign is that effortless work, effortless breath, effortless uh, walking. And the pilot for the first flight, second flight, he is so interested in. But more you become senior, you put into autopiloting. So one day I, I missed the plane and it happened me to go to a, another country and get the plane. Luckily, it was a Yalanka, so I asked permission to go to the cockpit. It was so friendly, gave a co coffee. Then I told I am a bloody fool, always talking about the autopiloting. I don't know. Please do it. Then he gave me about 10, 15 minutes. He says, Bhante, these are the books. These are all the books of the all pilots, so you can refer to the time, direction and place. And close by airport also, I have connection. And I know the orientation of the original airport. And the destiny is not there. And the computer data are filtered through four computers. So, more the moment, it is in autopiloting mode. Now, I am going into my hand. And then plane was little jerky. He told, can you understand? And you feel that, uh, that now it is come to the pilot's hand. It's very little. Then he told, these are the parameters. <clears throat> and he, he was demonstrating me. Then I told, are you meditating? I thought, Bhante, you will ask this question. My wife is meditating. I told, even though you know how to piloting, even your wife is meditating, you will never go to enlightenment. Be careful. And we were just reaching Indian territory, Go to go to the Sri Lanka. Then he told Bante, now we are going to get signal from the Indian airports, so I can talk. They have to answer me. I am I am calling, and I have four ways of information I can put into the autopilot. But but till the plane come up to the thousand feet, I have no rights to go to autopiloting. Completely in the captain's hand. Everyone must be in the belt. 
everyone must be seated, even the crew. Then only plane I can control. After taking about 100,000 meters, sorry, 100 meters, uh, the pilot can, if possible, give it to the co-pilot or the autopilot. So if you take a drone, 100% autopilot. Present day warfare, no soldiers are being killed. Because everything is happening in the cyber system. So, but meditation cannot do in cyber way. The bloody fool fellow must be inside. Your ego must be inside. Slowly, slowly you are nullifying it. And that is how it happens. So therefore, let that happen. And partly it is being mentioned in the report. When you are meditating, you feel like losing control. Even walking, you feel like uh, doped. Moving. Even sitting, your body will collapse. Even sitting, you feel like breathing is happening automatically. You feel like sleeping. You feel like losing the characteristic, intrinsic characteristic of the breath. That means the difference between in-breath and out-breath disappears. But you are supposed to understand the in-breath, out-breath at the beginning. Just before the plane is taken to the 100 meters, it's up to captain. But after the 100 meters, not necessary. Labeling is not necessary. Understanding and disappearance of the characteristic of the in-breath and out-breath can happen. Only you have to have prepared mind. But today meditators are with no prepared mind. They are throughout wanted to have a discrimination between in-breath and out-breath. Discrimination between the left leg and the right leg. So much so plane you cannot take above 1000 meters 100 meters because unwantedly monitoring unwantedly forking fingers so samatha yogi it is no problem those yogis for the concentration that's okay but the vipassana means you are losing losing the control and uh, the nasa they are controlling the uh, shuttle till as far as they are in the orbit. Soon they given the command to the go beyond the orbit. They says, please report us. We are losing the control. So then astronaut has to do it. They are indicating now one day is only one hour. Within one hour you are rotating around the earth. Within one hour you have a sun, you have the dark. So how to know how, where to eat? Now we have the dawn and the midday. Within that only we are eating, isn't it? But in the astronauts, it happened only 15 minutes, 30 minutes time. So they are marking the time according to the, the control room. But control is not with the control room. That is the vipassana. You feel very vomitish. You feel you are losing the breath. You, have, you feel you are losing the characteristic of the in-breath and out-breath. Ultimately, you are losing the characteristic of the desire and the hate. Desire is no more a desire. Hate is no more a hate. But they are losing, shedding off their old skin and more and more clung, come to the equanimity, middle. So these signs are there. So if you are, if you go prepared for meditation in the, if you go with the mindset, uh, you can facilitate it. Otherwise, you can disturb it. You often, un, uh, people without any interviews, people without any uh, reporting, disturb meditation, disturb vipassana. They have to report very humbly. I had the beginning, in-breath and out-breath, left and the right. Now I am losing like, I feel like disinterested like, I feel like sleepy like, I feel like losing the boundaries like. They are very, very intelligent points. Only, uh, only instructed yogis can report, but this report uh, is fairly uh, reaching that point. That's all we are going to go to the... Uh, traditional subject in the Atadanda Sutta, I would like to invite Venerable uh, Buddha Rakita, please present the day's topic and the stanza. Okay. So, not deviating from truth, a Muni, a Brahman, stands on high ground. Having relinquished all, he is indeed called peaceful. 
one who know, one who truly is a knower, a Vedic master, having known the Dhamma is independent, living rightly in the world, he does not long for anything here. So here again, if you remember that uh, there's been a flood and the river has been uh, changed its course, and there's due to be a battle between the Kolians and uh, Sakyans over uh, who's whose property is the the new realignment of the land and the river. So the the Buddha is following on this theme about um, who who is the one who can cross the floods, who is the one who can stand on a high ground, the dry patch. So he claims that that only a person who is not deviating from truth, uh, a muni, a muni is a kind of um, a wanderer, uh, a kind of a, a spiritual... Uh, wanderer and uh, a very high quality of Muni is that they move a lot so it can be very difficult to um, if if you move all the time you um, it's hard to nest it's, it's hard to have uh, a habit uh, exactly like if you go to somebody who lives in a house they um, they have their cup and they have their chair and they have where they sit and when and where they go Whereas uh, if you keep changing um, where you live and stay, uh, then this kind of a habit is, 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 is overturned. So when, uh, as a wandering monk, I had this experience, and it's, it's very challenging uh, to constantly, you know, get out of bed and you don't know where you are or, you know, um, what, where to go. It can be very disorientating. It's, it's quite hard work. And uh, so a Muni, a Brahman, a Brahman again here uh, is is not just referring to somebody of the caste of Brahman, but somebody of the characteristics of a Brahman. And this is somebody who's learned and uh, dedicated to to uh, to true religious practice. So not deviating from the truth, one stands on high ground. Having relinquished all, so here this person is a renunciate. They're not uh, just somebody who's uh, a backseat driver or somebody who is a, a theoretical practitioner. They have actually uh, relinquished all. Uh, he is indeed called peaceful. So here, uh, the peace that the Buddha is referring to is that they have put an end to suffering. So they've put an end to suffering by not deviating from truth. So here. Uh, Wisdom is the antidote to ignorance. So knowing things as they really are is called truth for the Buddha. And um, not knowing things as they really are is called ignorance or moha. And uh, the path to peacefulness is to relinquish suffering itself. And this is the path to being peaceful. And it is a path that is guided by wisdom, which is knowing things as they really are. One who truly is a knower, a Vedic master, having known the Dhamma, is independent. So here again, the Buddha is saying that a, a true Veda master, the Vedas are a collection of, uh, again, Hindu texts. And again, the Buddha is trying to distinguish that uh, it's not just by knowing the texts, it's knowing the Dhamma, the Dhamma here meaning the, the teachings of the Buddha, but also the that the, the truth itself. Dhamma, Dhamma means here um, something that is uh, that, that that is uh, true, uh, an object, uh, and something that is known to be true. So having known the Dhamma is independent. Living rightly in the world, he does not long for anything here. So living rightly, again, is, is living with sila, is uh, living as a renunciate, uh, relinquishing all. He does not long for anything here. Again, this rep- repetition that... That suffering is is based on craving, and that that renunciation of craving or attachment to things is the path for uh, to peace. So anyway, I'd be happy to hear what you might have to say about uh, this verse, how the Buddha is mixing in these um, addressing like the more Hindu side of uh, the, the the culture of that, not just that time. It still is the case, uh, referring to Brahmins referring to Vedas and what the true teaching is. 
thank you. We are, I am going to read the Pali stanza. Hundred, my, according to my number is 950. According to Vendable Bhikkhu Bodhi, it's 954, I think. Am I correct? The number? Right? 946. 46. Four, four numbers are uh, overlapping. Satcha uh, avokkam muni thale titati brahmano sabbanso patini sajja save ucchanto ti ucchati. Uh, the muni, that means achieved person, never exceed the truth. Truth is either the teaching of the Buddha or uh, nature, uh, law of the nature, and establish in the nibbana or a place where uh, he don't take any uh, decision. It is called uncoercive non-judgmental uh, place. And he is released from the all graspings of the six senses and worth calling a muni or saint. So this is kind of a, in translation, because Bodhi has referred to the Hinduistic uh, kind of this thing, but uh, this one says, you never exceed what is the prevalent truth prevalent truth of the nature, prevalent truth of the people, convention. He never exceeds. But he always take a stand, non-reaction. Take a stand, non-coercive, non-judgmental. So it appears like he is taking a stable stand in an unstable situation because uh, conventional truth is always fluctuating. He is the Buddha started in the Hinduistic tradition is really Brahman, Brahman, eh? but uh, after the Buddha, the Brahmanism changed into Hinduism. Hinduism is the name given by the Muslims. Earlier it was a Brahmanism. So there is a book in Pub British Publication Society, Brahmanism, Buddhism and Hinduism. And it says how the Buddhism is destroyed by this change from the Brahmanism to Hinduism. <clears throat> and uh, is Joshi he is writing therefore he is an Indian person he has written very nicely uh, how the uh, after the Buddha completely Buddhism disappeared and again the Hinduism came and exactly the way Brahmanism changed into the Hinduism uh, the namesake uh, due to due to the influence of the Hindu uh, Muslims so likewise in the in the singular translation no reference to the Hinduism China so means an arahant, he is never exceed the truth or law of the nature. Usually our traditional translation is uh, the Buddha's teaching. It's called Dhamma. But the Dhamma is not mentioned in the Gata. Satcha avokkam, Satcha means the truth. And Chatu Satcha, four noble truths. So therefore commentator says it is Buddhism. Or the Buddha's revelation, but it, you know, it's a, it's a Taoism. It's a natural law of the nature. Our come, he never transgress the convention, but he never agree with it. He never disagree. He agree to disagree. Uh, he never make any friction because he is happy with the happy with the forest. He never go to the society unless otherwise for the arms round. So therefore, he never transgress the truth. And Thale Tittati Brahmana, he always take the stand of the center. And that is non-reaction. That is the that is called Brahmana. Sabbang so patini sajja. Everything he relinquish. Whatever the eye going to say, whatever the ear, nose, tongue, the body, the mind, all falsified. It depends on the conventional truth. He, he don't abide by them and Patini uh, Saj <coughs> relinquish and he is the person worth calling a saint or Muni because his mind is always open to the next moment. He's not filled with the, what you have seen, heard, smelled, touched and uh, eaten and the mind proliferated or regurgitated, no, not the regurgitated, it's called ruminated. 
Otherwise, our mind is always filled with past memory. He is relinquished. Mind is free, just like a Zen master's cup. Once the cup is filled, he can't pull. He can't pour. He says, please empty your cup. The Muni is empty cup. It's useless. So, meditation makes you useless. Meditation makes you empty. That's called sunyata, tucha, ritta. Ritta means empty. Sunya means uh, nothing. Uh, tucha means lowly. It's not a high appreciate because your vessel is free. Your bag is free. Your, your ship is free. So, it can get the highest um, uh, nautical mileage because it's not filled with heavy weight. So that is the person called Muni, according to the um, 953 stanza, three stanza, three stanza, and we are coming that. They are also, Buddha is giving the pathway to the Upasanta, how to become a, a calm and quiet person. And calm and quietness is appear like a Samatha. But Samatha is filled cup. You have that jhana, this jhana, that uh, the superhuman knowledge and this and that. But vipassana make an empty cup and uh, 950 as well as 953. And just now, before starting, we listen to a Dhammapada Gata. And that is also talking how to how a person worth calling a muni. And... Uh, Maddekaratta Sutta always talking don't hanker behind the past and don't dream in the future and be in the present that also you have to relinquish so therefore uh, he can't trace the person who is not in the past not in the future you past and future you relinquish with the help of the present and then you relinquish present also so then when you are in a pole vault you use the pole at the top peak, you throw the pole and then you put the vault. That's why I have a big photo of a pole vault, pole vault, and uh, otherwise you can't jump up to that level. With the help of the pole, you can jump three times higher, but at the peak, jettison in the pole and jump into the, but throwing the pole to the other side, that is how the pole vault. So, that is the way it is called acrobats. It's called scouting. It's called kind of a skill. At the top level, throw away everything. Then the Buddha called him as a Muni. Uh, Muni means uh, mute. Uh, the Buddha also have nine epithets. One thing is uh, Muni. Mute. He's never talking. A cup, cup is empty. And ready to accept anything. Good counsellor. He has no opinion. No premeditated ideas. Free. That is like a newly born baby. We are fully mute as we newly born. But after six years we corrupted. Because of the parents' habituation. Parents think it is a great responsibility to fill their cup. They are filling with the tradition and the convention Ultimately, we consider this as a truth. And we call, I am a superior because I am so and so. Others are inferior because my mother and father is the best and they taught me, hold into that. So that's all I have to uh, add okay, as far as the 950 stanza. So this is, of course, as... Uh, in, well, Buddha Rakita daily says, where father's clan and the mother's clan is about to fight. They are about to kill each other. So just before happening, the Buddha is uttering it, but still unavailed. They are still fighting. With the third time, so he is talking something irrelevant <laughs> regarding the fighting. Okay, anyone wish to contribute to the discussion? Welcome. Salut, 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 Swami Nansa, and thank you, Bhante, for giving us our teaching and um, helping us understand how to, how we are with this in our, as a human being, how we tend to 
how we are completely conditioned. And as far as, so my my feeling on this is uh, what you're saying, Swaminatha and Bhante, with this teaching is, um, I hear um, saying that we are conditioned uh, as human beings with... Um, by society, but, but by education, by um, uh, the corrupted world that makes us a consumer and a uh, someone who uh, fits into the system and does their job, and uh, we we've got to be somebody. We we create this self. And um, and I was just thinking that um, what a gift to be at a place like this uh, where we have uh, Mahatero to listen to our reports and we can uh, incline our minds towards relinquishing and just being here with the present moment uh, with our mindfulness practice, so we uh, so whether it's a yogi that's here for a few weeks or even a few days, there's just at least there's a taste of uh, giving up your normal life and uh, some of your usual. Um, uh, things that make you who you are. Habitu- habituation. Yes. We uh, give up our habituation. I would say, uh, yeah, you have to fit into the schedule and um, go for alms and eat when everybody else eats and we come and meditate together and uh, so we give up uh, the habituation of the system of the of our lives that we've been conditioned and habituated to uh, follow, and the habituation of entertainment and TV and internet and everything. So, um, so whether you're a yogi or a, a monk, we're all giving up and inclining our minds towards giving up. And um, unconditioning through meditation and through reporting, uh, reporting the experience of here and now uh, in mindfulness. So um, I'm grateful for this practice, and uh, just wanted to pause for a moment. And that's that's my uh, my take on this. Is is this place here in the forest where we're shielded from all the noise of society and uh, have this quietness of meditation all around and mindfulness. Uh, so thank you very much, Swaminatha. Thank you, Bhante. Yes, we are coming from different countries and different upbringings. But uh, we have to agree, the empty my empty cup wise, we are the similar. If we have something, according to the content, we have discrimination. And this deconditioning, dehabituation is called de-learning process, very painful. You feel like going through a mill. Because everything is reshuffle. Just like a pack of cards, you shuffle it and redistribute the hand. So likewise, we are very, very reluctant to give away our habituation. And we consider that our culture, our upbringing. My progeny must take the, the same culture, same flag. And that's how. But we being monks living in the forest, eating someone given, and sleeping in a place someone given, and we have to. And still we are habituating. Replacing the the old habituation by the new habituation and this is also not the ideal one. Again, it is replacing. So that is a kind of a shedding of 
of your old skin and the new skin will come. Again you will shed it off and it will come. So then you understand the art of giving up of your habituation. And that is the one scouting. This is be prepared. That's the basic teaching of the Buddha. Be diligent and be vigilant. Upper mother, be prepared. Don't stand by your old tradition. Don't try to catch all the new one also. New one is just to get rid of the past one. And this also will be replaced by other. The Pali in Buddha says, idan nissa idam pajahat. Due to this, relinquish this. And this also to be relinquished. It's just a replacement. So, that's a that's small comment on uh, American. Uh, respect to Venerable Teacher and the senior monks. Um, uh, my observation from the stanza is that um, even if you are related to um, the Lord Buddha, uh, when you are intoxicated with greed and hatred, um, no one will be able to save you. And on the other hand, the Buddha is showing uh, that um, nobody else will be able to save you unless you, you yourself uh, go in search of your uh, liberation. So therefore, after two attempts to uh, teach the um, realization that Buddha has had to his own relatives, he gives that up as well. So he's, he's showing another pinnacle of renunciation that he is not hanging on to uh, um, the relatives and also not hanging on to um, convincing his teaching to his own relatives. Um, most of us try to convince our points to somebody else, but he has given up that as well. So, uh, therefore, I, I, I see um, it's a great lesson uh, for mendicants like us um, to understand some degree of um, uh, giving up, renunciation, uh, when we live in the society. Thank you. Now, that is the kind of a renunciation. And you are renounced with the help of another ma- junk. And that will be renounced by another junk. Day by day, the junk you are catch hold will be less and less. And it will be less and less inflicting. The Buddha says, Kinte jatai dummeda, kinte ajinasatya, bantarante gahanam, bairam parimajasi. But the use of your turban, but the use of your the, the mala you are wearing, and you are showing like a a holy man, but inside you are full of hatred and the desire. You are just gloss over the outside. No use. Even you are a Buddhist. Exactly the same. And the Buddhist monk is usually with the wired, the saffron robe and no hair. So therefore very little bit of, little amount of, uh, how do you call, uh, beautification. It's not attractive. But you see the other religious masters' costumes, they indicate the hierarchy. And they are very happy. Ultimately, few days' time, they will get caught into a female (laughs) (laughs) and then uh, unwanted children, and they disappear. But this is the attraction for the sex. This attraction for the other sex. And but the Buddha is not naked, not like uh, the 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 Ajivaka, not the the Nigandanata. He says have a fair loin clothes, the white clothes, and no hair style, nothing, and just behave like a, uh, the tree fallen down with leaves. Sometimes you in the inside the lake you have some uh, stumps standing in Anuradhapur area, exactly the same. So no one will attract you. But the true people, the noble people, understand it. So you are safe from the females. You are safe from the sexual traps. 
Because you, you just try to be a, just a human. So that is the way he himself renounced. But I heard the Mitteya, the Buddha, he become enlightened full, with the full attire as a king. Sword and the crown and the everything. And still he become enlightened. The, our Buddha is in, renounced six years ago. And they left went into the forest and live in the normal life with the three robes and the king, the father, the wife, everyone was so desperate. But now the image of the Buddha itself is a sign, the renunciation, but still has you mentioned, even if you follow the Buddha, but if you have defilement inside you, you are not worth calling a mute, not worth calling a, a peaceful person but at least we have the same, but we are trying at least. We try. Just like uh, girls and boys make uh, playhouses, live like a father and mother and have the mother's costumes and have children and kind of thing. The Buddha says, Kubara Kumarika Vange Valuka Krida. Just like uh, sand castles, we make it. But it is just to just for the play. But monks, we also the same. You are in the renunciation. German? German, no, no comments, eh? Israel? Currently very, very stingy. Not happy to share. Very stingy. Jews. Shylock. Chinese? Uh, yeah, Indian. Yeah, that is, we are attacking Hinduism. We are attacking Brahmanism. And you are representing Hindu and Brahmanism. Please don't get offended. Please give your comment, please. In Indian language, Indian English. So, what is Samatha and uh, what is Vipassana, Vante? And is meditation and mindfulness are same or different? Uh, I would like to... to ask this from the China. <laughs> China, China, what is the difference between Samatha and Vipassana? Huh? Samatha and Vipassana? Yeah. Uh, I think they are the same. Oh, yes. <laughs> so anyone find different? Um, Samadhi is in, is just focus in one point. Uh, Vipassana, you can uh, focus on one point and you can go another way and, and come back. That's uh, different. Vipassana <laughs> uh, is open. Samadhi is deep. <laughs> fairly good, that. Eh? <laughs> she, China, China is fairly good. Because when he was coming, he was obsessed with Samatha. He's fed up with Samatha. And he was searching about Vipassana. Now he finds Vipassana and Samatha are the same. Vipassana is confined. Samatha, you see, the permanent... The, impermanent nature, the suffering nature, and the non-self nature, even in samatha, even in samadhi. So that is for the, the, for the mindfulness. At the beginning, you may not be, but that is the end of the mindfulness. You have to see both are the same. Both are the mental concomitants, mental uh, situations, so some people are samatha bias, some people are vipassana bias, as far as they are not enlightened. When the enlightenment happens, both are two means, two ways, two means. Still the, the uh, Indian. I didn't get it, Bhante. Huh? <laughs> Still you are stingy. Very, very, not happy to share with anything. Just like Jew. <laughs> He don't like, he don't like, he always happy to have something from the table, but he never gives something. Andi, in Singhala we call Andi. He don't understand Andi, because he's an Andi. <laughs> I will chase you for the next discussion, because you are not giving anything. British? Hold the button for a while. It's on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I understand the concept of the discussion with uh, relinquishment and renunciation. 
Um, how does that, how would it sit with somebody that feels that they have responsibilities to, to other people and to children uh, that they have? Um, how would they deal with that? Uh, before you are defining your question, I would say there are two aspects in the Buddhist meditation. You are here and now, you are not socialized. The other part is you are socialized, you are thinking in society at large. Society at large, no end. It's a hell. Your question coming from the society at large. Can you think about here, now I am. I am living in the forest and someone will come and give something to eat because of the institute, of course. You will give something, uh, uh, a mat and the pillow and you are sleeping. What is the responsibility? Your responsibility is sit in the sitting time, walk in the walking time, do the other duties and do mindfully. All the duties in the monastery you can do mindfully. Buddha has proved it. Buddha, has, Buddha is asking. But if you put that into the society at large, I am not going to tackle. Because my renunciation means society at large. It's a hell. There's no end. It's an entanglement. So your duty, your will, you have human beings, once you become an elderly person, you can renounce and you can think, live with such people, those who are happy to live, uh, solitude, happy to live, echo, sleeping single, eating once a day, and uh, behave uh, in an individual way. You can go to the, com the community, but community has nothing to talk. That is the what we lost in the Western Buddhism. Western Buddhism, who Pandita Saito says, never they will develop, never they will develop Sangha. Because they have to have society at large. They are taking the Buddhism as a, an institute. So therefore, when the Pandita Saito, Pandita Saito going to the West, he says, I never consider as an agent of Buddha. Because the agent of Buddha expects others to pay respect. But the Westerners are not happy to pay respect. I don't mind. But I represent as the representative of Dhamma, Dhamma Dutta. I am talking about the principle. That principle I am sharing with you. But you see, it is 53, 53 books. How can I share with you? Even I have not completed 53 books. I am only asking one particular sutta, Satipatthana. Even then, commentary is such a big thing, very difficult. I am telling Sati not the whole sutta, sati, I try my best within seven days and then respect your own sati, not other thing, then you naturally become the sangha, that you become the community member. So therefore, <clears throat> even though he is giving the talk in the <clears throat> society at large, he is appreciating solitude. Be unto yourself. Here, now, I am. Whenever you come here, now I am, you are already enlightened. Whenever you become we, everywhere and every time, you are a hellish. You are in a hellfire. So therefore it is up to you. I mean, we people at least have some kind of renunciation and come to the forest and live one day or few days or few hours. So that discrimination might be, I have never seen this kind of a an argument or did, uh, in a uh, discussion, but in when I was in Connecticut, one girl, after three days in her views, she told, people are searching Nibbana in society at large. It never. We are going to apply the Buddhism into the politics, economics, sociology, never. But with the uh, political camouflage with the economical golden theories and society as chaos, you can be unto yourself. Then you will be a leader appointed by the nature. So that is your task. Be in the society but get a distance. Go by, abide by the social norms. Otherwise you will be a black sheep. 
We have to avoid. Yes, this is a sitting time. This is the eating time. This is a bathing time. Yes, yes. Do it. But other times, mind your own business, I call, be mindful and mind your own business. May be difficult for a British. You are in a commonwealth. Then an Indian will definitely fight with you. They have prepared the bills. Going to reclaim now. Then the Jewish will fight with German. Yeah. And Irish also fighting with British. So you have two enemies already born. I'm, I'm actually half Italian as well. Italian. <laughs> half Italian. But, but, yeah, but Chinese is strong. We have, we have uh, yeah, Chinese and Singaporean. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, the, as far as you are thinking in plurality, you are in hell. Think individual, it appears like unsocial, it appears like selfish. The Theravada is always having these two complaints. We are not self, self, social, which is mind own business. I doubt whether he raised the question. You finished? No, yeah, I've, I've um, understood enough, I think, to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Bhante. I would uh, just like to share an experience um, that this time up until now uh, really brought up. A few years ago when I finished the, mil the military, one of the first things I've done is to go on a trip alone on the northern parts of Israel. It was uh, just me uh, in the nature, minimal human contact, um, and it was practically the first time that I was really on my own in the, after the military time, uh, not dependent on anything, only water, some fruits. And uh, for about a week's time, I was just walking through the northern parts on a specific trail. And on one day, I remember while walking through a field, um, I've had a very long conversation with myself, just speaking even aloud with no one around, but I just spoke aloud with myself. And one of the things that I said um, clear is the mind that experiences everything as it is. And I remember that I was very joyful through that whole week, through that whole experience where I was not bound to anything, I wasn't supposed to do anything, I was just traveling because it felt right, I was alone with myself, I could, uh, I could dance, I could scream, I could sleep, cry, be alone. And um, the Sutta also brings this up for me. Again, clear is the mind that experiences everything as it is. I try to note it to myself every day to really bring it to, to the mind. Thank you. I, I would like to relate my experience. When I was in Nilambe, there was a crime happens, and the police is always coming. Center was closed, and uh, there's no one. So people ask. I was just uh, relinquished my job. I went there, and while I was there, early morning I can see Adam speak in the far away. And I used to do some yoga, only very some the police people were there keeping dogs. And uh, the estate is run by the normal day-to-day -day workers. Before this thing, I went to the, just like this is my residence place, a, a flat view is like this. When I, they are walking, I start crying. I don't know it's a happiness or sadness. I can't stop it. But I have a fear because the people will come soon after their morning period for the work basically Tamil people, and but I can't stop it. I let this happen, the loose nose, tears, and the saliva, and the crying, 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 crying. I thought, let that wave to go. I don't know whether it's a happiness, so this is because it's a nothing, no special experience. We had just a prepared porridge, very hungry, I know porridge will be like a the, the nutritious thing. And I can see the Adam speak. It's a holy place for us. And cry. And there were some people, one day in the Melbourne, they start crying. They ask permission. When I feel like, then I told, just burst it out. 
and shouting sometimes. That's the way the, the pent-up energy is going out, but it appears like something abnormal. Just like people after drugs and you go to the Philadelphia video, now you can see. But they are not shouting, and they're completely lost. Killing so much due to the overdose of um, uh, the drugs. And when the people become dope or dopamine hormone or that uh, acetonin or something like, and there you lose the time, you lose the place. And bursting happen. So Buddha's bursting, 82, Udana Gata. Udana means the upsurge. Coming is not aiming at someone, but he is utter. The, the 82 stanzas, very beautiful, irrelevant to the context, but he can't stop it. It is Udana. Udana means the air coming from the bottom, from, from the uh, seat of emotions, and you feel like laughing or crying or we like singing or dancing. That kind of thing happened. So that is what when the moon dance happened with the the Michael Jackson. Moonwalk. Everyone feel like it's an, it's not a sexual urge, but it's a kind of a kind of a sharing. And in music and art and everything it happens. But imagine when you are living in under a tree and you are, you are letting that open <coughs> catharsis, let them go. It's a kind of a healing. So th that day I was ashamed. There was so much of crying. In my life I have very little crying I experience. I don't care whatever did happen. When my father, father passed away, I cried to the point falling into the faint. Still in the faint, I know. That means I am camouflaged. I am doing something wrong. Something acting. But when that happens, it is un you can't stop it. Because you have you seen the young children, the babies, are, when you are in sleep, they are crying and they are smiling. My, my mother used to say, uh, uh, that baby see the early mother. That's why he is smiling. Or she is smiling. When crying, he says, uh, losing the mother, the last life. And then make the face very ugly and crying. But it is in sleep. We, there is no message. But that is how the, this thing happens. That is how the catharsis is happening. That's what you call free association. We, that's what we call counseling. When you are med meditating, your mindfulness itself becomes your counselor. Mindfulness itself becomes your medicine. You become the sick person. All the three things are come together. It's called Psychotherapy Without Self by Daniel Goldman. Read the book. Jewish. Jewish. But you are, you are Russian. Yeah, that, uh, that Don't tell anyone. He's a bloody Russian. He has to think about the Ukraine. Don't talk about these unwanted things. So the, the book, in the page it says, uh, the counselor's seat is there, the patient's bed is there, both are free. Psychotherapy without the self. And he explained when the mindfulness happens, that is what happens. You become patient, mindfulness becomes a medicine, and you are the counselor. Everything happens, but no self. Non-self approach to the Western psychiatry. And I, I would like to read this one also. Uh, I don't know how you are. I am. I am just put on unwanted thing. The, I read the the Daniel Goldman, the book called Social Intelligence. He says, compassionate lovers are, but capitalism lovers. Compassionate capitalism, and read the book Paul Farmers. Compassion means capitalism. I think I know you agree. The, the, all people come, uh, profess about capitalism, so the compassion, they are very capitalistic. Eh? Yeah, that is compassion lovers are, but capitalism lovers, page number 317. So yesterday when I read my old notes, it came, I was so happy because that was in my mind, but I have no way to express. But I now. Uh, just caught Daniel Goldman. 
is un- un- irrelevant to the today's topic anyway. Five minutes more. Um, oh, sir, I um, just would like to say a few words as a father um, for this gentleman's um, comment. Um, when I started my practice, my daughter was three years old and son was five years old. Now they are in their thirties. And uh, one thing I ensured was I allocated some time uh, for myself, at least two hours a day, um, for the practice. So um, while carrying out all the duties of the family and even the professional life, um, we will have to ensure that we allocate some time for ourselves. So when we do that, I don't think uh, that uh, there will have anything outside for us to restrict ourselves. And also when you live our life, we should learn to um, say enough at, at certain stages because uh, if you don't say enough, there is no limit um, to the things that we have got to do, especially when it comes to the children and and, and, and our own professional life. So I had uh, that ability to say enough and I did not seek promotions, uh, did not seek salary increases. What I was getting was more than enough for me to survive well. And uh, uh, when they started est- establishing themselves in their own lives, then I started putting the reverse gear on. I came from the professional life to a simple life, and then even a very simple life, and then ultimately gave up my job. And so like that, we will have to uh, don't take that as um, as a burden but uh, it will be a challenge for us to have, uh, in my point of view, a very strong practice. So if your path is correct, you will be relinquished. If your path is wrong, you will get entangled. So you can understand, before enlightenment, you get relinquished, you feel uplifted, and that you can understand then and there. No certificate, no exams. You feel... You are relinquished. You are you are renunciated, renouncing, and it is uh, when the fruit is ripened, it falls down. Don't eat sour mangoes. Just let it happen. So it happened in my life also, but uh, my one is not so dramatic because I was not married. I had no any this thing. My mother had ten children other than me, so relinquishment still the difficult, just like Israel, but. It is not so dramatic, but it happened everything autopilot mode. I had the idea when Baldamika told you do meditation. You I mean mindful whether you become a monk or not must be equal. That's the day you must be renounced. Still, I remember I had no any problem because I was a university student and a postgraduate student. No harm. No one knows. No one knows. Occasionally I go and have some retreats in Nilambe and that was a kind of a nest for me to go and live. And no one knows because my age people never meditate. At that time there were no meditation centers. There were no meditation masters. We all are the masters. So therefore, if your uh, means are good, end will be definitely good. It's Dhammata. Okay, now about to gong the bell. Thank you very much for the participation. This is the end of our English medium discussion.